convince you sin has benefits. That's what he did to Eve. He said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Those are benefits. Ye shall be as gods. Satan is so smart. He convinces us that disobedience has blessings. The Bible is the very opposite. Disobedience brings curses. Yes. But God in his mercy unleashes the curses gradually, hoping we'll turn back. My call is, I am living out of harmony with God's law. Therefore, out of harmony with the universe. I'm being affected, whether I know it or not, from the ground up, and I want that change. Anyone else? Out of harmony. You don't have to be a murderer to be out of harmony with God's law. Because the law affects how you think, how you speak, how you behave. Your thought process, process or mind may be out of harmony with God's law, but you have not yet had the opportunity to act out on the basis of the thought process. We're out of harmony. When we're in harmony, we think like God. That's where it begins. Therefore, we speak like God and we behave like God for the final time. I'm living out of harmony with God's universal law of righteousness. The carnal nature does not like that medicine. When God said, Adam, what did you do? He said, Eve. <laughs> Eve, what did you do? The servant. The servant had no one to blame. The carnal nature does not admit wrong. Only the spirit and the heart will lead us to do that. Second call. All right, God bless you. God bless you. We have time. It's quarter to one. You want to get back into harmony with God? It doesn't take half an hour. It takes a decision right here. A decision right here. But a decision with everything you have and everything you are. Messages to young people, page 151, paragraph 3. If you fight the fight of faith with all your willpower, you will conquer. The problem is, most of us do not fight with all our willpower. We sin with all our willpower. We don't want to get out of sin with all our willpower. But the promise is, if you fight with all your willpower, you will conquer. You know what willpower is? For those of you who watch football, watch a running back. He's being hit. He sees the goal line and he tries to stay on his feet. And he gets hit and he stays on his feet. He covers the ball. He just wants to break that goal line with that ball. And he's being hit left and right on his knees, his ribs, his head, wherever. But he wants to cross that line. That's what it takes. You're willing to fight that way? God blesses that effort. Somebody needs to say, Lord, as part of my re-entrance into the harmony of your law and the universe, I need to do one of two things. Either be baptized or rebaptized. And I want to say, Father, I'm willing to be baptized or rebaptized, one or the other. It applies to everyone, not just simply those standing. I need to be baptized or rebaptized. Sometimes a person needs to start all over with God. Are you with me? Amen. When a soul is truly reconverted, let that soul be rebaptized. Let him renew his covenant with God, and God will renew his covenant with him. Reconversion must take place among the churches, that as God's witnesses, they may testify to the authoritative power of the truth that sanctifies the soul. Evangelism, page 375, paragraph 2. If a soul is reconverted, let that soul be rebaptized. If a soul is convicted, let that soul be baptized for the first time. The call is, I need to decide to be baptized, rebaptized, and maybe the Spirit of God is telling you you need to do that. Who wants to make that decision? So, Lord, I'm willing to be baptized or rebaptized. I want you to raise a hand. Whether you're standing or sitting. Now, I want you to come. Come right here. You raise your hand. I need to be baptized or rebaptized. Rebaptism is in the Bible. I want you to come. Those of you sitting, you're in harmony with God, but you know you're always attacked by the enemy. And you want to say, Father, I recommit my life to you. Give me strength to honor you today. If you make that commitment, can I see your right hand? Those of you sitting, I want you to stand with us as well. Stand with us as well. The call is, I am willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For many of you who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I am willing to be baptized or rebaptized. Start my walk all over with God. And today is the best day to make that decision because you don't have tomorrow. As long as we live in sin, we are being affected and damaged from the ground up. The entire life, not just your church life, the entire life is damaged by sin. 
Come into harmony with God by allowing God's Holy Spirit to bring you to Christ, bring you into harmony with His standard of righteousness, which He writes on the heart. And He puts into you and me a hatred for sin and a love for righteousness. The call is, I am willing to be baptized. I am willing to be rebaptized. That's the call. Return to harmony with God's standard of right and wrong, which is the standard for the universe. And so we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What God requires of angels, He requires of us by way of moral behavior. No difference in standard. When you walk with Christ, when His law is in your heart, the law of righteousness, that puts you and me in harmony with the universe. Anyone else will say, I am willing to be baptized, rebaptized. I've been living outside of God's law, so I have been out of harmony with this universe, with Him, with His standard. And I want to come into harmony with God. The same way sin affects me from the ground up, God's righteousness will bless me from the ground up. That's the way it works. Jesus said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Whether the leaven is sin, it leavens the whole life. Whether the leaven is righteousness, it leavens the whole life. It's a principle. A little right, if it's held and cherished, will bless the whole life. A little sin, if it's held and cherished, will curse the whole life. Someone else not willing to be baptized or rebaptized is 10 minutes to 1. We have 10 minutes. I want you to come. Give us your name. Don't be afraid. Start all over. You know, Mary Magdalene, the Bible says, out of whom Jesus cast seven devils in Luke chapter 8, verse 2. There's some Bible scholars who believe that he cast the devils out seven different times. Not seven at once. She kept falling into sin, falling seven different times. She had to come back, come back, come back. The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times. But Jesus persevered with her. You may have to start all over with God. When David sinned, we're told he confessed, repented, and was reconciled.